All right, Buena Seta, what's poppin'? It's your boy, Big Rich. You know what it is. NWN Drangheta Weekly News, the only platform to report on Drangheta News that comes out. Of course, my boy Shattered finds the article. Salute to him. Gentlemen, wipe your feet on the rug, blow some smoke in the air. Let's go. The article is written by Ed Scarpo, the Piromali Andrina of Giotaro. On a ridge above the Calabrian town of Giotaro sits a house overlooking the coastal settlement and the surrounding area. Giotaro is located in the middle of a long plain adjacent to the Tyrrhenian Sea in the deep south of Italy. The house occupies a position that feudal lords in medieval times would have envied as it dominates the local area. And that is exactly the point. This is the home of the feared Pirom. Piromali Mafia family, ironically or intentionally situated next to the town's graveyard. Historically, the Piromalis are one of the most powerful clans in the Calabria Drangheta, Italy's richest and strongest mafia group of today. Not much is known about the early history of the Endrina, but the family patriarch and the capo Bastoni, the chief, Don Gio Caccino, Don Gio Caccino Piromali, was related to many of the top mafia clans of the Giotora plain. The Piromali family are what one would call mafia aristocracy, one of the oldest Andrinas in the Andrangheta, a mafia-style criminal society that emerged from the Italian prison system in the late 19th century. Giochino fathered five sons and two daughters. The eldest son, Girolamo, known as Momo, was born in 1918. Unlike the Sicilian mafias across the Straits of Messina, the Drangheta have always been a family business. The Andrina is centered on a patriarch and his brothers, sons, nephews, and cousins, with each Andrina connected to each other by important marriage alliances. Girolamo, along with his brothers Domenico, Giuseppe, Giacchino, and Antonio, were no different with all of them entering the family business. Although he was officially a cowherd, Girolamo managed to earn himself a litany of police charges throughout his teens and twenties, which included assault, robbery, and murder. The patriarch of the family, Don Giacchino Piromali, passed away in 1956 after a long reign as Capo Bastoni of Giotaro. Like a feudal succession, his power is passed to the eldest son, Girolamo. However, however, the transition did not go smoothly with the Ventre Carlino and Drina challenging the new leader's authority in the town. One of Momo's brothers, Antonio, was killed in the war for control that raged over the next year. Momo instigated a bloody vendetta against his enemies in retaliation for the death of his younger brother. Dozens of members of the rival, dozens of members of the rival Andrina were shot down, bludgeoned to death, or simply disappeared. The survivors of the Ventre Carlino clans fled the Giotaro plain in terror never to return. The Piromalis have asserted their power in the town with the position now secure they sought to expand their influence by marrying into local Andrinas in the region. They were closely allied through marriage and blood ties to the Mole clan, also based in Giotaro. The Piromalis were also affiliated with the Pon, Beloco, and Pesche clans, based in the nearby town of Rosano, and to other Andrina on the plain and across Calabria. The Highway of the Sun, the Highway of the Sun motorway project that was to connect Calabria with the city of Salerno to the north reaped the Piromalis a lot of money throughout the 1960s and beyond. The project was badly managed, wasteful, and thoroughly infiltrated by mafia clans. The Piromali's earth-moving and trucking companies creamed off a huge profit from the massive construction project. By the mid-1960s, the Piromali's had emerged as one of the most powerful Andrinas in the entire Drangheta and were also one of its largest clans with at least a couple of hundred members. Don Momo Piromali was part of the part of the triumvirate of the most powerful bosses in Calabria. The other two were Don Domenico Tripodo of, the, of Reggio Calabria, the largest city in the region, and Don Antonio Macri of Siderno on the Ionian coast. 
all three capo bastones were involved in the Sicilian Mafia's lucrative cigarette smuggling business and were initiated members to La Cosa Nostra as well. Don Momo Piromali was an innovator of sorts who wanted to modernize the Drangheta and move away from its traditional rule base, which would also enhance its own rising power within the Calabrian Mafia. He created a new rank among the Drangheta top leaders called La Santa, which would allow him to enter the Freemasonry, something that had previously been banned for initiated members of the Calabrian Mafia. Shadowy Masonic lodges were springing up across Italy, and Don, Mo and Don Momo saw this as the perfect way to network with corrupt businessmen and politicians, making it easier to infiltrate local government and public work contracts. Don Momo also wanted to take the Calabrian Mafia into previously forbidden criminal rackets, such as drug trafficking and kidnapping. The Piromalis were involved in the notorious 1973 kidnapping of John Paul Getty III, the grandson of the American oil billionaire who had his ear cut off by his captors before a huge ransom was paid. La Santa was, La Santa was vehemently opposed by the more supposedly traditional bosses, Don Antonio Macri, who had been denied membership of the newly invented body. The Piromalis also sought to undermine the power of Reggio Capo Bastoni, Domenico Tripodo, by supporting his underlings, the upstart De Stefano brothers from the Reggio suburb of Arci. The reason for all this jostling for power was in large part due to the Colombo package, an Italian government initiated an Italian government initiative instituted after the Reggio Calabria revolt in 1970, which had which had been set off by the decision to move the regional capital to Catanzaro. The revolt was backed by neo fascists and the Drangheta. It was only quelled after the army marched into the city. The government of the day announced the Colombo's package to appease angry Calabrians after the revolt. A huge steelworks and port near Giotaro, employing 10,000 people, was promised along with other public works contracts across the region. The Drangheta stood to profit enormously from the money pouring into Calabria, but it destabilized the underworld as the clans jostled and schemed to be the recipients of the bountiful cash windfall. The balance had been maintained in Drangheta by the Triumvirate since the mid-1960 and would be shattered in 1974. The rising ambitions of the Piromalis and the Di Stefanos had shattered the existing status quo and despite repeat attempts at peace by the traditionalists, the first Drangheta war was inevitable especially after the Di Stefanos, backed by the Piromalis, started robbing the older Don cigarette shipments. The first shots in the war were fired when a hit squad sent by Reggio boss Don Mico Tripodo stalked the Di Stefanos to a popular bar in Reggio Calabria. Giovanni Di Stefano died in a hail of bullets with his brother Gregorio, known as the Comet. The oldest member of the clan was wounded. The Piro Mali De Stefano alliance struck back in 1975 of January when a four-man hit team gunned down the Siderno Don Antonio Macri at his own territory after he had finished a game of bowls. The following month, Don Mico Tripodo was arrested near Naples, where he was hiding out from the De Stefanos. A year later, he was stabbed to death while awaiting trial in prison on the orders of a Camorra boss, Raffaele Cutolo, who was a close ally and business partner of the De Stefano brothers. The first Drangheta War claimed the life of a hundred men in Calabria. A story recently broke in the world media about the Drangheta member feeding a rival to pigs but it was, in fact, Don Momo Piromali who first used his brutal form of punishment during the war, bragging to his wife on the telephone that only his rival's thigh bones were left. 
the Piromalis and their allies emerge victorious from the vicious gangland conflict. And to the victors go the spoils. The Piromalis now were in a position to take a huge cut from the public works contracts in the region and also from other criminal ventures such as drug trafficking and kidnapping. At the end of the First Trangueta War, a large meeting of the top bosses was called by Don Momo Piromali, which was to be held on the Aspromonte Mountains. But Don Momo's younger brother, Giuseppe, had a truly Machiavellian intrigue in mind. As Giorgio the Comet de Stefano sat down at the important summit, a low-ranking Andranghettisti called Giuseppe Suracci stormed out of the tree, shooting the new Reggio Capo Bastoni dead on the spot. The Piromalis killed Suracci and severed his head. They presented his cranium as a peace offering to the comet's younger brother and successor Paolo to prevent another war from breaking out. The Piromalis told the Balfour de Stefano that his older brother had been murdered by Suracci because of a personal vendetta. In fact, the Piromalis had instigated the killing their upstart allies down to size. The Piromalis wanted to prevent the De Stefanos from benefiting from the lucrative steelworks and port that was being built on their territory. The comet had apparently been attempting to muscle in on the rackets in the Giotoro plane. By the late 1970s, Don Momo had taken a step back from the criminal affairs of the Endrina, handling control to his younger brother Giuseppe. Don Momo passed away from natural causes in a hospital of his hometown on the 11th of February in 1979. The clan leadership passed officially to Momo's younger brother Giuseppe, now known as Don Pepe. Already a wanted fugitive for dozens of murders, Don Pepe spent most of his reign on the run from the law, but he didn't stray far from his territory and was captured by police in February of 1984. He was handed a life sentence for his career of crime but continued to run the Andrina's affairs from there. Corrupt politicians campaigned on his behalf to have the harsh conditions relaxed. In 1987, Don Pepe's ordered the death of Gio Toro's mayor, a Christian Democrat doctor who had angered the imprisoned Drangheta boss. In a highly unusual and brave move, the murdered mayor's wife testified against the Klan. Normally, the town council was dominated by Piro Mali relatives who made sure that the Klan's bidding was done in the town hall. The town council had been dissolved many times in recent years for mafia infiltration. The Second Drangheta War erupted in 1985 with the conflict centered on Reggio Calabria. The Second War was ignited when some of the smaller Andrina in the city challenged the power of Reggio Capo Bastone Paolo De Stefano. This time the Piromalis and the De Stefanos were on the opposite sides, with the Piromalis backing the opposition in Drina in Reggio in Reggio. They were angered with the De Stefano's attempts to muscle in on the rackets on the Giotoro plain. Paolo De Stefano was gunned down in his power base of Archi on October thirteenth of nineteen eighty five. The war rumbled on until 1991 and around, with over around 700 people killed. The De Stefano Andrina was nearly wiped out in a war losing over half their men. Peace was brokered by the Andrinas of, Saint Luca, of San Luca and the Sicilian Capo di Tutti Capi Totorina. A provincial commission of the Calabrian Mafia's top bosses was installed at the end of the war to maintain the peace with the Piromalis taking their seat on the 25-member body. Despite the huge casualties resulting from conflict, the Piromalis were largely unscathed in comparison to the smaller Andrinas that bore the brunt of the fighting. The ambitions of the De Stefanos had been checked for good, and the Piromalis emerged victorious yet again from another mafia civil war. By the early 1990s, the Italian government's plan for a steelworks in Giotaro had floundered due to a recession, high costs, and an unviability of the project and infiltration by the local Andrinas. A further plan to build a huge power plant in the area also came to naught. 
However, the Peter Mollies were boosted in 1993 when a shipping magnate spotted the huge potential of the unfinished port of Giotaro. Several companies stepped in to develop Giotaro as one of the largest container ports in the Mediterranean Sea. Businesses were soon booming as the port sits strategically on one of the busiest shipping lanes in the world. With the opening of the new container port of the Piromales and other local Andrina demanded that the shipping companies paid them a dollar fifty per container that docked at Giotoro. The companies refused to give in to this demand, which would have cost them about half their profits. But faced with the power of the local Drangheta clans, they did accede to the awarding of contracts and subcontracts to mafia backed companies in the area. They also allowed the Piromales to place their own men in key management positions at the port. The new container port right on the doorstep also provided the Piromales with the perfect opportunities to get more deeply involved in the international drug trafficking and armed smuggling, using the port as a base to land huge quantities of drugs and guns. The clan also later expanded its operations in the port to include the dumping of toxic waste, paid for by corruption of northern Italian companies. The Mole Nedrina, also based in Giotaro, was considered the military wing of the Piromali clan, were given the responsibility of building relations with Colombian cocaine cartels and Marxist rebel groups based in South American country. By the early 2000s, it is estimated that 80% of all cocaine shipments to Europe were arriving at the port of Giotoro. The Piromales were awarded by the Colombian guerrilla group, the FARC, with the sole right to distribute cocaine in Europe after the Sicilian mafia botched one too many shipments. With the clans Capo Bastone and Don Pepe languishing in prison, the day-to-day -day activities were ran by his nephew, also called Giuseppe. A fugitive since 1993, Giuseppe Jr. was captured by the Carbonieri in 1999. He was found hiding out in a sophisticated bunker worthy of a James Bond movie located right in the center of Giattaro. In the late 1990s, over a hundred Piromali clan members and their allies were doled out heavy prison sentences for a, for a myriad of crimes, including drug trafficking and infiltration of the port. This was a heavy blow to the Endrina, which is still trying to recover from today. The Piromali sought to have the harsh prison regime imposed on their members relaxed by approaching the corrupt Sicilian politician Marcelo de Utri, who is currently awaiting extradition to Italy for mafia association after fleeing to Lebanon. The aging Don Pepe was released from prison in 2003 on compassionate grounds due to a long battle with cancer. He died in February of 2005 and his funeral was attended by over 20,000 people. The leadership of the clan passed to Giuseppe Jr.'s son Antonio, who oversaw the clan's business affairs, and another relative, Gio Chino, Gio Chino, who ran the criminal activities of the clan. The long-standing alliance between Piromali and the Mole Andrinas broke down in dramatic fashion in 2008. On a Friday morning, February 1st, Racco Mole was driving his car on the outskirts of Giatoro when two men drove up to him on a motorbike and shot him three times with a 9mm pistol. They then approached the car, delivering a kill shot to the head. His death sent shockwaves through all of Calabria, with many fearing another huge war would erupt in the benighted region. Rocco was the, Rocco was the military chief of the Indrina, and he was executed by the Piromales because of a dispute over control of a company and container port. Swift retaliation was expected from the Mole clan, who it is worth remembering were considered the military wing of the Piromali clan. Imprison boss Giorlamo Mole, however, urged caution on the younger Hawks and his family and told them we have 100 years of history and family ties with the Piromalis that we cannot wipe out. An uneasy standoff followed for months until the Italian police 
launched Operation 100 Years of History, preventing a war between the Andrinas in October of 2008. The 74-year-old Piro Mali acting Capo Bastoni, Giacchino, was arrested with his lawyer nephew, also named Giacchino. The former mayor of Giotoro, his deputy, and the mayor of nearby Rosarno were among the other 14 men arrested too, and hundreds of millions of assets were seized from the clan. In 2010, the 30-year-old Girolamo Piromali, who was running the Endrina on behalf of his imprisoned older cousin Giuseppe Jr., was arrested along with six other relatives and associates for running an extortion ring in Giotoro. Millions of euros in assets were also seized from the clan during this more recent crackdown. Today, the Piromalis face more uncertain future than at any point in their long, gory history on the Giotoro plain. Continued pressure by the police has sent the clan scuttling underground and forced it to become more clandestine than ever before. However, while the Piromalis may no longer strut around the streets like feudal lords, their presence can still be felt casting a long shadow over the small Calabrian town and its huge port. Time will only tell if the once powerful Piromalis will recover enough from the tribulations of recent years and continue to rule this blood-soaked corner of Calabria for another century. This is your boy Big Rich, Drangheta Weekly News, and you have yourself a good night. Salute.